Well, Kathy, you know, I have, in the last six months, I probably had canceled more than 300 events, 300 concerts. And that's wow. the uh, Chairman Me Society and Music and Menlo, as well as our solo career. Um, it is very, very hard. But I have to tell you that knowing the musicians, the first month was total shock. And so the first month, the first month when this hit, I was stuck at home. There's no concert. And I thought it was just four weeks it would be done. So I right. that's what I thought. I thought, you know, we had to cancel a March 19 concert. And you guys were coming on the 30th of April. And I thought, well, we'll, we'll be back by then. You know, I mean, I did not think this was going to continue like this. So I, I agree. I was in total denial, I guess. But yeah, the first month that I added the CD that I needed to do just to get myself into the group. So I, I released the CD, The Winterizer. Winterizer is a song cycle of a young man traveling in the winter in the snow and seeing the end of his life. It's one of the most beautiful and most depressing things. And then, so I will be editing every night with David and listening to the edit and cried ourselves to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and after we finished that project, we realized this is the long lasting thing. So we had designed all of the digital program and it's what actually a great opportunity. CMS has been very, very lucky. We actually has been quietly acquired or paid and captured these amazing concerts. Out of the desire at the beginning 10 years ago was, God, these concerts are so amazing. We just really have to document it. Because if we don't, our generation of artists will disappear. Think about that. We still see High Fitz's video, Horowitz's video. There's not very, there's very few from our generation because in the US we don't have a government support. We don't have, we have very strong union rule. So the, it's really came from two angels of the major donors that we were able to do this. And at first, the condition is we'll just offer it to everybody for free. And the pandemic happened. Suddenly our staff said, let's, let's finish this project, let's polish it. So that was also the first six weeks. And we now have more than 1,000 pieces in the archive. When I first started, it was about 650. The last six months, we, we just keep finishing all the editing and it's the silver lining of this whole pandemic. Yeah. And what you're about to see in the front row, which we call the front row national, it's really one of the most amazing and great performances. Um, I was so impressed by the, by the quality of those recordings. And you were so smart that all of you were starting to do that. I remember we had, I think you and I had a little happy hour in April. And I remember you saying, uh, oh, we're gonna do, we're gonna figure something out. We're gonna figure something out. And I always know that when you say that, you mean that. And I loved how the one thing that you said to me that so stuck with me was you said, you know, there is right and wrong. And it is wrong not to ha have live music. <laughs> Yeah. That is wrong. That is just wrong. And so I knew that you were going to figure something out um, and, and put something together. Uh, and this, these are such wonderful performances. How did you, so how did you and David um, curate these? Were you, you know, tonight we're going to hear from Alessio Bax and Lucille Chung, who are mm -hmm. a married couple and pianists. And, mm -hmm. um, how, you know, how did you put the, because I know that you're very, very thoughtful about how you put programs together that are on stage at a concert. So how did you put these together? Well, that, in the beginning, that was the most often asked question. How are the musicians doing? And our board has been super, super concerned about the welfare of our musicians. Think about it. The best musicians are the one we perform all the time. And suddenly there's no income for any of them. So I have been in touch with all of them and knowing their struggle. Tonight, Alessio and Lucille 
Um, they have a daughter that has a very um, difficult immune system. Mm -hmm. So they have not left their house uh, ever since. So except last month, they went to Italy finally because Alessia is Italian. Yeah. And start to notice all my musicians had these incredible, extraordinary perspective. So we immediately got our videographer, who is a videographer been with me for the last 18 years. I captured him when he was in the New York Film School. His name is Tristan Cook. He's incredibly talented. I say, Tristan, I'm going to send you to guide the musician to capture their life. So you will see, uh, how many are you broadcasting, Kathy? Four right now. I mean, every month we have one. So we have tonight, we have Alessia and Lucille, we have Jimmy Lynn, we have Arno Sussman, and we have um, Anne Marie. Got it. Yeah. So I and Lucille is a couple with a young child who has bad immune system. So you will find out how the artists deal with their stuff. Jimmy is a superstar in the Far East and he teaches all the time. So he will talk about how that impact him. Arno had a baby in April in New York, in the middle, you know, hospital crisis. Yeah, yeah. And, and then um, Emery is the uh, 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 is music directors in um, Vail, uh, Colorado. So Emery has a very interesting perspective. And, you know, you will find it's, I think, I did eight of them. So there's actually eight artists. They all have different stories. But you will find that arts, it's there with everybody. It's actually quite inspiring. Um, I think the eight that little documentary will become like a historic capture. And uh, I like that. I was very proud of this project. And Kathy, thank you so much for, you know, providing these for your local audience. The, uh, our audience in Grand Rapids like families. So it's so important we keep them engaged. So important we're together. It's so important we still have music. Uh, in every of these documentary, we actually had a Q&A with the artists. And if you like, you can also invite the artists in to find out what they're doing. Uh, we pay them a little bit of money so they can pay their rent and buy their food. And so it's all part of the effort from everyone uh, to keep our uh, audience and keep our community together. Yes, I mean, these, we did pay a little bit of money to have these, but my gosh, a little bit. I mean, you are making these very, very, very um, accessible, and we want to support you, and we want to support the musicians. I mean, I think that is something that we are, we've kind of talked about as an organization and as a board, how this year, you know, how we fulfill our mission is going to look very, very different. Yes. But that's the most important thing. It's not about making money. It's not, you know, it's, we don't make money anyway. We're nonprofit. <laughs> exactly. it's, it, but it's about having to, you know, doing whatever we can to still fulfill the mission of bringing music to the community. And I think that people are very excited about this. And I am just so thrilled with these little these little films that you put together because they are such high quality performances and you get this insider look into the artist, which is really, really interesting, especially during these times that, you know, knowing yeah. that their lives have changed so much. Um, so, so did you go, so you went through the list of all of the recordings and you decided what to put together? I mean, I, you know, you already do that in such a very, very, thoughtful way when you make programs on stage. And I know that you have this massive spreadsheet of, you know, for, for St. Cecilia, you make sure that you don't play the same thing very often. And so you had to have just spent a lot of time on that. We have not repeat one piece ever since we engaged with St. Cecilia. And, you know, so the, the, it's like always fresh on stage, always new, something you could discover. Uh, today you're going to hear an incredible Mozart concerto play so elegantly. And then you're going to watch the very, very last note that we play. And it's an interesting story um, with the Bartok uh, for two pianos. Bartok uh, during the war actually migrated to the United States. 
and um, it was it's similar to the situation right now. He was suffering a lot. So actually, musician, he was supported by many, many, many musicians. And this piece was written for him. He wrote it for him and his wife. They both are pianists. So they can be engaged in, in order to make a living. Piece of, uh, is for two pianos and percussions. And he arranged it also as a concerto format. So that's important to know. It's one of the most unusual piece because before him, before this piece, there was not there was none of the music composition with two pianos and percussion. And it's very, very hard to come by because as a presenter, if you want to present this piece, think about it, you need two ray piano and two yeah. ray. And then you have to rent all the percussion, so it's impossible to tour with. It. Yeah. Uh, and it was one of those things, but you will notice they, were talk they talked about how eerie it was. It's one of these you know, war war I, piece. I yeah. had tears at the end of that, for sure. In the beginning piece of this, I don't want to ruin it, but it, it did, it showed how they realized things were different now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's a great documentary plus great music making. And this, this time you get all the, every artist series all have a, a way of just position and it's a, it's a fascinating programming. And I'm actually just about, I'm the process in creating four more. Uh, and this time will be a biography, actually, four very interesting um, uh, group sets of musicians that have different life as well as actually making like a regular concert for, um, format for the unfortunate part is I think this lockdown is going to last longer than I know it. Yeah. And it's going to be so terrible for us to not to have uh, music in our life and arts in our life. So these high quality production, the, the, Actually, back in April, when we first talked about it, I immediately know I told the office we have to share this with the, with everyone. It was so inexpensive; we deliberately made it that way. In the end of the year, I have an email just drafted. When all the fees will come in, or the donation that coming from the organization, the fifty percent of the money is going to go to all the musicians. And yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. So, so yes, if we, if for some, you know, if unfortunately we are not able to get together in 2021, we will continue to do these broadcasts. I also want to congratulate the Chamber Music Society on 50 years. Oh, thank you, Kathy. And Dude, have you watched that documentary yet? It is phenomenal. It is so good. We're going to share it in an upcoming newsletter to our patrons, I think in the next couple of weeks. Um, I watched the whole thing the other day and it is so well done and it's so wonderful and uh, it just shows what an important, uh, you know, an important organization the Chamber Music Society has been and what great people you have involved in that. So, yes, yeah, so stay tuned for that. We have a few attendees. If anyone has any questions for Wuhan, you can type in the chat box and we will, we will, uh, answer those for you um but yes I'm, I'm happy you know and just so everyone knows we already have the 21 22 season planned so if we can't do this season in any way uh we will do next season and next season is our 10-year anniversary with the chamber music society partnership so we're very excited about that and we're ho and we're very i'm very happy because i was so disappointed that the April concert that was you and David and Arno and Paul Newbar doing this quartet night was camp. Have we had to cancel that? But that's the first concert on the 21-22 season now. So we'll we'll start the 10th anniversary uh, season with with that. And I, and you know, the, I, the first chance that I can come to you, I will be there, and our musician will be there for the Grand Rapids audience. There's absolutely no question. But one thing that's extraordinary that I learned from this last six months is these broadcasts have no borders. Yeah. So think about it. Ask your audience, not just watch it themselves. 
I know there are family watching parties. Uh, I know um, I have a friend that actually invited a Zoom meeting with all of her classmates uh, from university all over the world. So they have an excuse to do something together and host a party. I know one of my, don't know who underwrite one of the program that invited all of her family and grandchildren. They have like 20 people and join me for a, a wonderful Zoom meeting. So, you know, you can have such fun and especially at this crazy time, it's a very classy thing to do. <laughs> it is, it is. And you know, we have this partnership with this wine store up the street that has been, it's called Martha's Vineyard. And oh, wow. our, our people know about it, but you don't. Martha's Vineyard is this beautiful, long time, uh, long standing specialty food and wine shop. Uh -huh. And uh, like, well, every time that you come and do a Maestro Society dinner, they cater, they cater oh, that. that. Mm -hmm. But they have the, they have a little store. So Camille has, um, we put together a little wine and cheese and snack pack. And people can buy that to accompany the concerts. And oh, 100% and of the proceeds come to St. Cecilia. He's donating all of those proceeds to St. Cecilia. Because we're offering these for free, obviously. We're offering the <coughs> the recordings, you know, the, um, yeah, the broadcast for free. So, yes, it's, um, oh, so Ellen says, loving our Martha's package, not just a snack pack. Yeah, it's nice. You can choose from a red wine, a white wine, a champagne, and then all of these little goodies that go with it. And it gets delivered to your door the day of the show. So, um, yeah, it's, it's good. So, um, that's a oh, is oh. it's so much. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, you don't have to wait until next year. If Kathy invite me, I'll always just come on the Zoom. And <laughs> that's right. Well, Lois, <laughs> uh, Lois was very uh, instrumental in bringing a bunch of people to the concerts because she lives in a in a place where she started to get all of the residents to come and come on a bus. And so, thank you, thank you for that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and that's a great, uh, wonderful thing that is happening in the pandemic. I save so much time without have to deal with airports and flying, and you know I don't really travel, and I end up really get to see my audience, get to meet my donors on the Zoom, and everybody seems to be just so happy that we had these great opportunities. So yeah, invite again, Kathy. <laughs> okay. All right. No, you know, I felt the same way, Wuhan. We, I, I connected with some of our donors uh, via Zoom at the beginning of this, or well, maybe halfway through, let's call it. And it was so um, inspiring to me to know how much they cared about us and how much they were worried about us. And it made me feel so good because it's, it is, you know, it can get very depressing that there's no music on the stage. I mean, there's days when I just get, we're busy, which is all of us are still working. We've been working the whole time. We've been busy. We're trying to reinvent some things like this and some maybe pay-per-view performances and such. But um, every once in a while, you just think, oh, I, you know. I just want it. I want our old lives back. <laughs> I want our old lives I, back. I don't think about that because we can be as creative as we've ever been. Um, think about the uh, these wonderful opportunity that you know before when I come here we we will go out to have chicken wings and a beer and then that's the end. Of it. And yeah. since the pandemic, I'm already talking to you and I have these opportunities and. You know, for the uh, for the front row for these uh, digital programming, you know what the most beautiful thing is? It's I don't we don't have budget restrictions. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I can have a concert with twenty five musicians. You know, three pieces can be all different. I mm -hmm. actually have far more varieties in some of these programming. So it's really really fun. And also think about what you have done for your community. Um, I hate to mention it, but when you turn on your computer screen or your TV screen, most of the time it's the most unpleasant news. So 
It's wonderful to turn on your your computer screen and suddenly all these great music come out and yeah. it's uplifting. Really watch that documentary. I love that documentary. And yeah. it's kind behind the story. Um, we had a big gala uh, it's our, because it's our 50th anniversary and was completely canceled, of course. So we took the gala money, the money that we would have had fed everybody with wine and steak and all that. We said, we told the honorary, why don't we use the money and make a documentary, mark who we are, uh, introduce everybody what chamber music is, show it all around the world. It was just broadcast in China. I think they had 250,000 hit clips. Wow. Um, wow. And let's broadcast yeah. nationally, nationally, and besides introduce everybody to chamber music. And we hire a team of young filmmakers back in June when we started this project. They know nothing about chamber music or even classical music. And they capture everything about who we are. It was one of the most amazing um, project I have ever done. I didn't expect that, but they captured yeah. everything. It is so well done and it's so moving. And so we, so everyone who's listening, it is available on the Chamber Music Society website now as a as a um, on demand video. It's on their website, but we will be sharing it in an upcoming newsletter in the next couple of weeks. Um, it's about what fifty minutes long, almost an hour long. It but it is. Like oh, I was mesmerized, and it's just wonderful. Um, and you and David have just. Uh, it's funny because I know all. <laughs> I know all of kind of the various artistic directors from the years past, and you and David have done such an amazing job of bringing the organization, you know, in into the future and into this digital age, even before this was happening. So um, we are so, so grateful for our partnership with the Chamber Music Society, and you know how much I love you and David and how much... I, you know, the best day of my career was when we did go out for chicken wings and beer. <laughs> and and the two of you said to me, <laughs> think big, how can we help you? And this is what came of it. I mean, we just, I had just booked you as a recital at, you know, on our series, and our, we called it our um, classical series. And, uh, and of course, our long our long history at La Jolla and Santa Barbara and all those things. So mm -hmm. that just changed everything for us. And, and you are always so committed and we are so grateful to you and David and the Chamber Music Society musicians for bringing us amazing performances. And, <laughs> well, and, for, and for doing this and having, you know, when you said there's right and wrong, and wrong is not having music. I knew we were gonna we were gonna be okay. Things are gonna be okay. So I just you know I do want you to know how much we just are so grateful for this partnership and for you and your vision of of chamber music. Thank you, Cassie. Please take great care of our audience there, and we'll always be there for you. And we will bring more and more of these programs. Digital or live, it should be in everybody's life because it's give us hope and give us beauty. Um, yeah. Well, fingers it. crossed that soon, sooner than later, it will be live. But in the meantime, we will do this. And um, and thank you for putting it together. It's very wonderfully yeah. done. So I think everyone will really enjoy it. We should probably sign off so that they can get on. Yes, yes, yes. Enjoy tonight and big hugs to everyone. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Wuhan. <laughs>